Can lives be shortened because of it? I believe they can be. Absolutely. And there's some times in our lives that we need some wake-up calls. You know what I'm talking about? A wake-up call? Time to do something. When I go to the closet and I told my wife this morning, I said, it's time to do something. I only have one suit that fits. That's why you guys see it every Sunday. Don't you think that aggravates me? It's time to do something. Family doctor said to my wife, she had her visit the other day. Oh, I hate to tell you this. How's the big man doing? You wait till I see him. Hey, you know the big man? I want to show you the little man. All right, we all have things that we can we can work on, don't we? We all have things. We all have wake-up calls. Is this a wake-up call for you today? You think you could do better this year, this, this new year? You think it could help more people that are in need? You think you can do better? Would you be like to be led by the Holy Spirit? I would. I want to be led every day. Every day. Things I say, the things I do, places I go, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be led by Roger because I make a lot of mistakes when I do. I want to be led like Simeon. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me every day. Life is really short. Much, much, much more shorter than you think. The Holy Ghost was sent to be our constant guide. He abides in all who confess Christ as Lord. The Spirit claims our bodies as His dwelling place, reigning in residence in our hearts. Most Christians have no trouble accepting the Holy Ghost, leading us to the Lord. We know that no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw us. So many of us understand that part of it. We don't have any problem believing the Spirit is continually at work at us. Most of us have called on the Holy Spirit countless times for comfort in our times of crisis. We preach about Him. We teach about His gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. We pray to Him. We seek Him. We beseech Him. We're revived. Many have experienced genuine manifestations of the Spirit. It seems that we know very little about what it means to walk in the Spirit. If I were to ask you what it means to walk in the Spirit, could you describe what, what this is? Could you explain it clearly to anyone who asks you? I used to think if I prayed a lot and fasted a lot and all, did all those things, when i get up off my knees, I'd be walking in the Spirit. Then I could walk in the Spirit. Don't you realize that when the Spirit lives within you, you're walking in the Spirit every day. There's days when you don't feel like you're walking in the Spirit, but you are. There's days when you don't feel good. When you're sick and got the flu and your nose is running faster than your feet, the Spirit's in you. He didn't leave, he didn't leave you. He doesn't come and go in your life. He's there always. Lo, I'm with you always. We need to understand the truth about walking in the Spirit. If we understand that truth, it'll be able to, the Holy Spirit will be able to deliver us from confusion and strife and distress and indecision and even the lusts of the flesh. Paul summed it up very clearly. Let us walk in the Spirit. You see, there is only two ways a Christian can walk. You're either walking in the flesh or you're walking in the Spirit. The flesh has its own stubborn will, as you know. And it acts as it pleases. It does whatever it chooses. And then we ask God to bless our choice. It rises up and it declares, The Lord gave me a sound mind and I can make choices intelligently. I don't have to wait on Him for direction. 
After all, doesn't God help those that help themselves? You ever hear that? Chapter and verse. It's not in there. You might hear it, but it's not in there. Our walk consists of all that we say and do. Our daily choices that we make. Our very lifestyle. Walking in the Spirit is very, is very much just the opposite of the flesh. We surrender our will to the Holy Spirit and we trust His still small voice to direct us in all the things we do. The Holy Ghost was sent to set up the complete government of Christ in our lives. The Bible tells us in Psalms 37 and 23, the steps of a good man or woman, that means woman as well, are ordered by the Lord. Each and every one of us want to have their steps ordered to the Lord. Absolutely. And it says they are. They are. Submission to the Holy Spirit. We're to walk in total submission to the Holy Spirit as Christ walked in absolute submission to the Father. Let me read some verses for you. Jesus said, The Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. John 5, 19. I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I live by the Father. How can we possibly think that we don't have to depend on the Father for all things when Jesus himself said that he did. As lovers and followers of Jesus, do we would dare think that we can do what our Savior and Lord couldn't do? Jesus waited on the Father, always seeking to have the mind of God. If we're honest, we'd admit that heaven is often the last place we turn when we need direction. All too often we run to counselors or spend hours on the phone with friends seeking advice. Well, what do you think? Is it a good idea for me to go in this direction? Do you think I should do it? And sadly, we go to the Holy Spirit as the last option, as if even if we go to Him at all. Isn't that sad? The book of Numbers chapter 9, I can be brief with this because you know the story. A cloud came down and covered the tabernacle in the wilderness. The cloud represents God's presence with his people. And today the cloud serves as a type of the Holy Spirit that is work in our lives. I'll read it for you in Numbers 9, 18 and 19. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. When the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. Whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents, and they journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the command of the Lord, they rested in the tents. At the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord. Numbers 9, 22 and 23. You see, the cloud that was in the Old Testament was, was eventually lifted to heaven. But you see, another cloud descended from heaven. Hundreds of years later, in the upper room in Jerusalem, the Holy Ghost, the same Spirit had hovered over the wilderness tabernacle, came down and hovered over 120 worshipers that were gathered there in the upper room. Where they sat, it dwelt upon the people's heads as cloven tongues of fire. The Greek word that's used for cloven means thoroughly distributed. This cloud of fire had split up and sat on each of those individuals in the upper room. The flames possessed the people's bodies. We're talking about this spiritual flame. Jesus' followers were certainly in the spirit that day. Holy Ghost living in them. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost, but that doesn't mean that you're walking in obedience to His leading and allowing yourself to be governed by Him. So what's the application for today? We who love the Lord today, we have a cloud that, that we it can follow. We, may be, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, we can pray and we can sing in the Spirit, we can experience manifestations, but we still have to commit to taking orders from Him. If we don't wait for his direction in all things, we simply aren't 
walking in the Spirit. And Paul's instruction makes this very clear. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So what's it mean to walk in the Spirit? I believe the Spirit is the key to understanding our walk. 